when I was a little boy, I watched a lot of cartoons. Like Black Pete's Dragon, a feature film where a boy becomes friends with a magical dragon. Baba Papa, full of colorful characters morphing into all kinds of shapes. And Roadrunner, endlessly being chased by Coyote. And you know what? I thought the characters in those shows were real. They were alive. It just never occurred to me that those cartoons were actually made by people. Later, when I was older, I learned that this was called animation. You draw a lot of drawings that are slightly different. Then you flip them and create illusion of movement. Your drawings come to life, which I thought was pretty cool. So I gave it a shot. So after days and days of meticulous drawings, I created a glorious and beautiful couple of seconds worth of animation. Great. But if it took me that long to do just a couple of seconds, then what about all those hours worth of Coyote running after Roadrunner on TV? How is it possible to make anything like, then, uh, like that in less than a hundred years? Even when I went to art college and studied animation, I still thought you would have to do animation on your own. I was doing art, and artists should work alone. Then I got a job, and finally I figured it out those type of animated shows were really only possible with animators collaborating. I'm now an animator, animation director. I moved from my home in the Netherlands to the UK. And since living here, I have worked as part of a team on shows like Ben and Holly's Little Kingdom, uh, The Amazing World of Gumball, and Peppa Pig. Peppa Pig has been shown in over 180 territories around the world. It has won four children's BAFTA after awards and be nominated for 11. It's a show about a lovable, cheeky little pig who lives with her younger brother George and her mummy and daddy. When I tell people that I work on Peppa Pig, they often think that I do everything. Come up with the stories, draw her, and animate her too. It looks really simple after all, but of course it isn't. It actually takes a lot of people working very hard together to make it look so simple and effortless. So how's it done? The original creation of Peppa Pig was a collaboration between producer Phil Davies and two animation filmmakers, Mark Baker and Neville Astley. They created um, the characters in the world of Peppa Pig. And then they assembled a group of people to help them make it. I was one of those people and I've worked with them since the very beginning of the first show. I had up the largest part of the crew, the animators. During the production of the last series, we made 52 episodes in less than a year. So an episode is done in less than a week. But we don't start one script on the Monday and finish the final sound mix for that episode on the Friday. It works more like a factory conveyor belt with everybody waiting in line and doing his or her thing to an episode as they roll on week by week. Now that sign might sound very dull and uncreative, but each episode is um, its own film with a different um, challenge for each for, for the whole team. Mark and Neville, the creators, have been involved in every story written so far. They collaborate with scriptwriters, and together they come up with storylines in brainstorm sessions. These storylines are inspired by their own everyday life and that of their friends and families. The birth of my daughter Rosie inspired an episode called Mummy Rabbit's Bump. Rosie was born so quickly that I nearly missed the birth because I was carefully parking my car in the hospital car park. <laughs> Lucky for me, I did make it in time. Mr. Rabbit didn't. The scriptwriters turned the storylines into scripts, and it usually takes about five drafts for a script to be ready for production. Voice artists record their dialogue straight after the script has been finalized. This is a Harley Bird, who's the voice of Peppa, and we've got Alexander Armstrong doing a couple of voices. The voices for the show are always recorded before the animation begins. This gives the voice artist freedom to breathe life into the character without the technical limitations. Sometimes they ad-lib or do something unexpected with the line of dialogue. The animators then use the voice to guide the performance. Storyboarding is the next step. The storyboard artist is briefed by the directors who usually have a strong idea about a couple of key visual moments in an episode. It's a storyboard artist's job to make a shot-by-shot -shot visualization of the script and work out how those key moments can be connected with each, uh, with each other. Storyboards are a working tool, and so they serve the next step, the making of an animatic and design. 
The designers start their work with the drawings from the storyboard and a brief from the directors. Using computers, they draw the characters, props and backgrounds for each episode if it doesn't already previously exist. They then turn those drawings into an articulated digital doll that the animators can move around. In the edit room, the audio from the voice records, sound effects and incidental music is put together with the pictures from the storyboards. This is called an animatic. Because all of the voice artists are recorded separately, this is the first time that directors can actually hear all the characters talking with each other. So at this stage, the directors can see how the visualization from the storyboards work. So they can review it, recut it, choose different audio takes, or even re-record dialogue. As they work with the editor and assistant editor, the episode is refined further and further and feeds the next stage of the process. That's layout. Like the storyboard artist, their work will never be seen in the final show. But it's an essential working tool. They collaborate, interpreting designs and the storyboards, and then place the characters and props in the background. By adding the sound, they create the first color version of an episode that is just shy of being animated frame by frame. When the layout version of an episode is done, it is the first time all the elements are seen together. We have a big meeting and to look at everything to see if it's working. At this point, anything can be changed and it often does. When we get to the animation, um, we have arrived at the most work intensive part of the job. An animator has to do around eight seconds of finished animation a day. That might not sound like a lot, but that is 200 individually frame frames, individual frames in one day. Since it can be so labor intensive, we are constantly looking for ways to cheat or avoid work. We use a specialized software that allows animators to copy movements between characters. This means animators can collaborate on each scene. Even though we want to minimize the workload, we are also perfectionist by nature and want, to be at, want it to be at, as good as possible. At the beginning, we had no idea how many different versions of any one scene we would do. So then we thought it was finished, we added the word final after the name of the scene. Then you had final final, super final, super final new, <laughs> super final new new. Eventually, this, the file ended up as super final new 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 new. <laughs> and that's when we started using version numbers. Once the whole show is animated, the composer does his work. Julian Knott has composed most of the music for Peppa Pig. He and the directors work closely together to make the music an integral part of the show. He originally wrote the end theme without words. We were all surprised when Mark Baker suggested to have Peppa sing the lyric Peppa Pig repeatedly across the theme tune. But now you can't imagine it without. Animation has no sound. It, uh, it all has to be invented. The sound is one of the few things that happen outside of the Pepper Studio. Sound designers create sound effects to match the action. Everything from a footstep to a thunderclap to a bouncing dinosaur. It all gets mixed with the dialogue and music and then reviewed by the sound designers and the directors. Even though this is almost the last stage of production, new ideas can still happen. More than once, I've run back to the studio to make a new bit of animation as a result of an idea from the sound mix. And then, after a good deal of checking and double checking, we have finally come to, an e to deliver the episodes. Um, we're never ready to call them finished. We call them broadcast ready. The whole process is pretty much done all under the one roof, with everybody um, exchanging ideas in the tea room and laughing over common jokes at the lunch table. This w uh, sort of proximity helps us work. It means easy communication between all of the different teams and it makes the exchange of great ideas possible at any time. The first series had the smallest production team, about 15 people in one room. But as more episodes uh, were commissioned, we had to work um, with more people uh, to get the work done. Over the four series, about 140 people have worked on the show. So far, we've made 209 episodes that way. Producers, writers, storyboard artists, editors, voice artists, designers, layout artists, animators, and sound designers all bring ideas and details to broaden the vision of the creators and directors of the show. All adding something, all of them, collaborators. <laughs>